it's still a fairly new product, so uh, I'll be covering all the basics. In fact, it's such a simple product that there's really not much um, deep technical stuff to discuss. And we're going to be looking at that. Uh, I'm an IT consultant from the Netherlands, or based in the Netherlands. I'm uh, originally from South Africa. And I've been in the IT industry uh, mainly on the Microsoft side for too long. And um, you can follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn. And if you have questions after the session, you could just mail me or check out my, my blog. Just uh, Google Micro Specialist. Uh, I'm on WordPress. That's going to be our uh, roadmap that I'll be covering. We'll look at uh, just a little bit introduction of what it is, what the product works. Uh, I'll be looking at the architecture. And you guys will see how easy that is. A couple of demos. Um, UEV is really just made up of an agent on the client. And it doesn't really matter which OS you're running from Windows 7, Windows 8, Server 2008 R2, Server 2012. And we look at working with the agent, uh, configuring the agent, a uh, bit of PowerShell, how the product works. And also, we look at templates, because UEV uses a number of templates. It's really just XML uh, files. Um, and uh, we'll be covering that. And in the end, questions. So if you guys have any questions, just uh, throw it out. A little bit of history. Uh, that's my, uh, well, that was my first computer back in the day, 20 years ago. Uh, you, you could only really just one, use one program at a time. It was one OS uh, type, and every computer had them. And um, you didn't have much of a user experience. Everything was pretty much how they made it. You just had to use it and be happy with it. And then a couple of years after that, with, uh, when Windows was released, uh, we had the ability to run multiple applications. And then we had all kinds of funny business happening with profiles. And we all know how a mess or how much problems that used to be, uh, you know, using roaming profiles, getting users to use one machine, they go on and use another machine, and then all of a sudden, you know, you having slow logons, Things are taking too long. Settings are either missing or go corrupt. And sometimes, what are the best things you have to do? Anybody? Exactly. You delete the profile, and then everything's missing. Everything's gone. And users weren't too happy with that. So, uh, uh, you know, Microsoft had a look at how uh, Windows really worked and thought, well, um, you know, we can have uh, folder redirection. And that made it slightly better, but it didn't fix the problem, which is why they uh, fast forward 20 years. And this is pretty much what we have right now. I mean, I showed you my first computer, and this is pretty much what I'm using right now, you know, besides the laptop. and. Uh, as you can see, we're using multiple devices. We're running different applications. We're running the same applications on all these different devices, even our uh, mobiles. And um, we have different challenges. So we're running all these uh, different kinds of applications. We have FAT applications, MSI installed. We have virtualized uh, applications. I'm sure a lot of you went to uh, Ment's uh, AppV uh, session this morning. And UEV works with all those different kinds of applications and different environments, whether you're using uh, VDI or session-based uh, computing or uh, FAT clients, terminal services, RDS. It just works. And um, the nice thing about Windows 8 right now. Anybody of you using a Microsoft account? 
used to be your Windows Live ID, your Windows account. Anybody using Windows 8? Multiple devices with your Microsoft account? Great, right? You just log in on your tablet, your Wi-Fi settings, application settings, not always, but generally everything in Windows 8. You log in with your Microsoft account and through magic of SkyDrive and Microsoft services, you have the same experience, even your Wi-Fi. I mean, over here, logging in, the same thing. And um, great stuff, right? And um, well, just to mention something, the guy that invented this conference, he called uh, Microsoft's user state virtualization a few years ago a big joke. But Microsoft listened to what a lot of people had to say, all the problems that we had with profile redirection, and that wasn't really user virtualization in the sense of with all the applications. So we still had a lot of issues. And with uh, user experience virtualization, different play on words, but a great product nonetheless, we getting to the point where that's more of where we want to be. Um, there's a couple of vendors outside that have similar products. They do the same thing, user state virtualization or user experience where the settings of the different applications roam with the user as he's logging on to all these different devices, but they use a lot of infrastructure. And the guys at Microsoft decided to keep it really simple and it's really just an agent. Moving along. The focus that Microsoft wants to bring about is multiple devices, but the user, because that's the most important guy in the company, user is king, right? So the focus with UEV, it needs to be personal and flexible. It's got to be something simple to use, easy to set up, and it's just got to work with Windows 7, Windows 8, you know, whether you're using fat clients, VDI, RDS services, and it also has to be integrated and scalable, which means you, you don't want to go and set up, you know, all these different kinds of infrastructure like you have to do with certain other guys. Um, you know, no SQL database, no extra servers or things to install. So with personal and flexible, what Microsoft uh, views is your application and your OS settings roam across devices. So it's not just the folder redirection that you get with the profile of the user, you know, like your, your themes, your desktop backgrounds, all the nice look and feel stuff, but also the important stuff, like uh, what happens in applications. And that's, and uh, a big problem we used to have with, uh, Roaming profiles was login stake forever. I've, I've seen profiles that were in the gigs. And uh, like you said, we just delete and it's better to start over. But with UEV, you have fast logins and smart syncs. And what they mean with that is you have, it uses minimal settings. It's not a big profile of large amount of data that gets transferred from device to device. The agent really just looks at the application and on open and on close of the application, that's when it writes the settings. So it doesn't wait for the user to log off the device unless you're doing the Windows settings because that unfortunately is the nature of Windows when the user logs off and logs on again, you know, he gets his uh, look and feel. With simple and versatile, they're meant to that to be flexible in terms of the settings. So the settings that you select, it's very granular. You can select the settings you want to roam. You don't have to take everything. You could, but the idea is to keep the information or the, the files really small. Um, and all that information goes into template, templates. So you decide which settings and it's easy to roll back settings. In the demo, I'll show you guys a nifty tool 
you could just back up the template and restore it uh, to the initial state. And UEV is very easy to deploy. For those of you that use System Center, uh, MDT to roll out desktops and applications, uh, GPOs, uh, group policy, you're already using that stuff, so you don't have to implement a new way of deploying uh, the product. And it's really simple and easy management. You, you use your existing tools. UEV is part of uh, Microsoft's uh, desktop optimization pack uh, product. So if you're using AppV and MedV, you have the rights uh, to use the product. Uh, enterprise customers with uh, software assurance, you know, it's, it's free. Well, not free, but you're paying for it. Uh, so uh, if you're not using it, it's just one of those things that at your disposal, I'd uh, recommend that you use it. It's really user experience virtualization. It's a real user state of certain settings of the application, of the, of the application and the OS that you roam. And uh, all that information is stored in a settings location. It's really just a file share. So you've got a little agent running on the client and it's just pulling the information off the file share or the home folder. So depending on how you set it up, by default, it will go and look at the home folder location. Or you could, and it's also best practice to create a new share. It's pretty much just like the home folders and the uh, profile shares that we use currently, where per user uh, uh, map, or folder is created with the uh, settings packages. And um, the templates you then store in a settings uh, location, another file share on the file server, and you could use DFS to roam that across sites within your company to make it easier. When we look at the architecture, it's quite flat. It's really just the agent you have your applications. So all your applications are using the settings from the registry. There's uh, file locations in the program files. It could be any uh, files or configuration files of the application. So your application's looking at those locations. And uh, the UEV is also hooked up to the same location. So if a user uh, makes a change to one of the settings, UV registers that change, and because it's using a template, it will it knows which settings to look at, and creates setting packages on the file share in their storage location. And the next time the user opens that application, the agent looks at the settings package and flushes the locations with that information. So it's really just small bits of information, really small uh, files that get used, and uh, that's how uh, UEV just uh, collects the settings, applies it, and the user sees the same look and feel as is roaming across tablets, laptops, uh, or remote desktop sessions, etc. Any questions? And well, uh, it depends on the tablet that you're using. If you're using a Windows tablet, uh, like Windows 7, Windows 8, you have offline files. So if you're not connected to the network, the agent will look at the offline folder location and it will store the settings there. The next time it's online, it will just automatically sync the settings with the file share. So it's always using a file share, but the agent will look at the offline folder the cache and oh, use that. It is on by default, but there's a way to set it off. <coughs> if you're using RDS or VDI and you have a persistent connection to your 
your service, there's no reason to use offline uh, cache or folders. Uh, so there's, at installation, you can uh, set off that default behavior. Uh, pretty easy, right? Excuse me? What about the address? I would, I would assume I can find it this way. Is this for a particular extension that I can copy it or? Well, you, um, it's how you set it up during installation. You set the location to those templates. So it's, it's always using an, a file share. So it expects to find those XML files in those uh, locations that you set. And you can use group policy to configure the agent with all the settings. Microsoft has provided ADMX uh, uh, templates for that, for Active Directory, for group policy management. Well, no. The agent really just checks for the files. But Microsoft provided a tool, the UEV generator, to help you create those. A, a few has been, have been provided by default. And uh, for a few, um, you know, Windows um, settings and theme settings. And also certain applications have been provided for you. And later on, we'll see that how you can go and create your own templates uh, or modify the ones you have, although that's not recommended, but it's your environment. And uh, there's a large community where guys I know create these templates, make it freely available. So um, we'll uh, look into that as well uh, a bit later on. Hey, right. Well, when we look at the scope again, it's, it's granular, okay? So the settings you specify in those templates, the agent will look for and apply those settings. So only the OS settings and the application settings that you specify. So it won't just go and do all of them. So it will really, when we go through the UEV generator, we'll have a look at how it does that. And the great feature of UEV is that Mixed desktop environments, both physical and virtual. Traditional desktops and virtual desktops. And also mixed application environments. Whether you're using MSI installed applications, fat, fat apps, or virtual applications. With support for both AppV 4.6 and 5.0. So Not XP. Not XP. Windows 7. Windows 8, 2008 R2, and uh, Server 2012. So uh, it's not really limited, but I, I don't expect anybody to implement XP pretty soon with... Uh, <laughs> they need to be migrated to Windows 7, Windows 8. Uh. Yeah. Uh, could you repeat the question, please? You know, when the whole desktop yeah. comes about, you've got the desktop uh, and you can set the profile. Okay. I've, I've got a demo RDS set up. It, it really just works as long as the agent is running on the OS. So it just works depending on where the, how the agent is configured. As long as the settings location is configured, it knows where to find the templates on the OS. Uh, the, the OS or the, the, the deployment type or mechanism uh, doesn't really matter. Does that answer your question? Demo. Let's have a look at the 
experience. Now, let's just see. Can you guys think of environments where uh, you know you have users using multiple uh, applications? It may be in, in your companies. Uh, I know we I do a lot of implementations for uh, uh, medical facilities, you know, like hospitals, uh, clinics. We have people moving from patient to patient, so they don't have their own computer. They're moving to a different room. Or I do a lot of implementation for schools and uh, educative uh, universities, colleges, that sort of thing, where you have lecturers moving from class to class, and every time they have to log in again. And these guys love to have the same look and feel. They don't like to look for things or, you know, find some things different. I mean, if you look at when you get a new laptop, right, as an IT support guy, how long does it take you to get everything just installed how you like it? So with UEV, let's have a user running Windows 7. I'm just going to use uh, my test account. So I'm logging on to Windows 7, and I have a bunch of apps installed. I'm just going to use uh, the calculator. I'm. Uh, let's say this is one of my applications. Just use an example. The user goes in uses the, the application, sets a bunch of settings, how he likes it. On close, all that information gets written uh, to the application. And uh, if I log in as the same user, and this time I'm going to my Windows 8. I used my other test account. Hank. So I'm going to log in as the same user. My user is still running an active uh, profile. So I didn't log off. So all my profile settings and everything hasn't been written to my profile share, my folder redirection location. And if I start up the same application, as you can see, a lot of my window settings, my profile has been loaded. If I start up the same application, it should give me the same look and feel that I had on my previous uh, computer. If I change this back to, uh, let's say, stats, and uh, Let's do a unit conversion. So different settings, on close. If I go back to Windows 7, magic. So the user doesn't see any difference in change. He just moves, and everything's exactly as you like it. Yeah? I'm sure you could do some stuff with uh, PowerShell, but all these writes really happen on close, all these actions. So I'm, I'm talking about uh, the, the application that's written by us. Yep. So we can control when to trigger the thing. Yes, that, that we look at later on, my other demo, how you go and create these templates for your custom application. It's really quite easy. Well, the, the thing with Office, it works as well. If I open uh, Word, uh, uh, I don't want to activate. Well, anyway, um, Word works as well up until 2010. Uh, well, that's the, the templates that's been 
default templates that's been provided by Microsoft. So you'll get templates for 2007, Office 2007, and Office 2010. There's a built-in roaming capability for Office 2013, and the team that developed Office, they recommend that you rather use the built-in stuff for the roaming, but it is possible to go and create templates for the Office 2013 application. There's a way to play around with that. And we know that Office uses a lot of uh, group policy as well to create that uh, with the, the normal dot dot and uh, uh, work group templates and that sort of thing. So a lot of those settings are external to UEV because UEV, you really want to try and keep the amount of roaming settings from to a minimum. You could do a lot of, you know, but then you'll be creating a big, XML uh, file. And when we have a look at the XML uh, files, you guys will see how, how, how small they are with the settings. And also when we go and create them with the generator. My gear as well. Um, let's see, what can I change? Options. Let's have display. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not sure if this will, um, if this is, uh, is one of the options, but let's have a look. Let's do Bry Forum VM uh, proofing. Show read stats. Um, languages advanced. Where is uh, show picture placeholders? Show background colors. Uh, customize the ribbon. Let's customize the ribbon. Um, Let's take away the home ribbon, insert. Look different, right? I uh, don't want to save it. When I go back to my Windows machine, I don't want to activate. As you can see, the ribbon has changed as well. so all the applications, as long as the template and the settings location for those templates are accurate on the different uh, uh, operating systems or computers. Let's do that. Let's, uh, it won't work because each product, uh, let's have a look, maybe it does. Uh, options. Username, right for So it has, yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> Good. Any questions? Okay, well, that's the idea. The user just goes in, does his thing, logs off, or closes the application. We know a lot of users don't like to log off because they're going to get back in five minutes, right? And then uh, they go off into another room, maybe a meeting room, something. They've got to do a presentation. They open up PowerPoint. And then they first have to spend 10 minutes before the presentation getting everything as it should be. Let's uh, fire up my uh, RDS server. I'm going to shut down a bunch of VMs. Now, on my previous Windows 7 and Windows 8 uh, computers, I had the agent installed. I'm going to fire up my Windows 7 computer that doesn't have the agent installed. But I have the agent installed on my RDS server. I'm 
I'm going to log in as, I'll give Hink a break. Log in as my user. Could be the first time that I'm logging uh, on as this user on this uh, VM. It's probably why it's taking a bit long. <coughs> yeah. We're going to have a look at how they uh, set up. can be both. It depends entirely on you. Uh, there's group policy uh, templates, so you can set it per computer or per user. So you could, uh, depending on the type of computer that it is, you could set it up uh, with, uh, you could enable it with offline uh, capability or not. So let's just have a look and see. Windows 7, okay, I'm logged in, mm. don't like that, but anyway, let's just have a look, okay, I didn't get a time to make everything neat, um, still only have the defaults, just can't touch that. So I'm running a remote app, and there's no agent installed on my client, but because the remote app isn't running off my RDS server, where the agent is installed, that's automating that uh, settings for me. So even if I were to change it here, back to standard, and... Uh, basic change the settings of my application sign out I'm just gonna shut down this machine And I'll log in as my user. Back on my fat client. So I've been working on the terminal. My application or my agent on my, uh, could be my primary device back in my office. And my application is pretty much the way I left it. Any questions? Okay, moving on. It doesn't matter. As, as long as the agent, see the agent, uh, looks for the application. Sure, I, I, know, I get that. I get that. Mm -hmm. Is the agent is the agent still active in the browser? So if the agent is gone, then the user back on the terminal is not still active. Or the remote app is still active. Is it still active? No. It does. It doesn't matter what kind of application you're using. There's no integration. Uh, the the application, uh, AppV, just looks at sure. the version. It does the, the agent doesn't uh, really know <coughs> that it's AppV or it just sees the application. So it just senses, hey, I'm starting up Word or whatever application you have. It senses the name, the version. As long as it's the same version, if it's a different version, it won't sync the settings. 
So if you're using, <coughs> unless you have a template for that version. So. It doesn't matter. It just looks at the application, Windows, um, looks at the registry. I mean, whether it's a virtual registry that gets created for AppV or whether it's the actual uh, registry. Um, when we have a look at the creation of the templates, uh, uh, you'll see uh, what, what the agent looks at. Well, it really depends how you're using a settings location or the home folder. Uh, creates packages, like a, a package, and all, everything in the package gets written to where it should be. Right, so it's still in the little red gem still in the search box in the whole package. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's uh, the the presentation of the operating system. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, there's also no uh, SQL database required. Mm. The idea was to keep it simple and workable. So you could just implement it within 10 minutes in your environment. And that's really how easy it is. As long as you. Um, install the agent and you have the default templates or your own created templates in the settings location, it, it just works. And you don't need a specific uh, settings location. Uh, it could default to the home folder. But the, the problem with using the home folder, the user has full rights to the home folder. So he could go and delete those package files. <coughs> it's hidden, but Users are. Uh, um, I don't have the. Uh, I don't have a app V running right now. But I can show you what it looks like. Yeah, the OS settings on log on and log off. Application settings on open, on close of the application. So This, this is on a per user base. Yeah. It will save whatever's been changed in the. Yeah. Compressed? No, not, not that I'm aware of, no. Well, I've got my home folders, my profile folders, and then my UVV uh, settings uh, location for the different users. And per user, an individual uh, folder is created. And within that folder is a hidden folder, your settings packages. And depending on which templates and which changes the user has made in his applications, because he could have the application didn't make any changes. So the application is still default. It doesn't have to go and create a settings package. So nothing has really changed. It really depends on how much information you're willing to uh, save in the XML file. When we go and look at the curation of these files, 
you guys will see more or less what gets saved. So that's pretty much all the applications that I've been uh, using, or this user's been using, uh, Word, uh, operating system, calculator, uh, desktop settings. It depends on the setting that you uh, changing. The, the idea is you're letting the users control the settings. So you wouldn't go and create a group policy to, you might have a default group policy that writes once, just applies once, and then for the rest, the user will go and change as required. Mandatory profile, uh, you you could. Uh, what's that? <laughs> roaming, <laughs> roaming profiles. Well, it. It does in a sense, but you're still going to have a bit of a profile. And the idea is to keep your profile quite small because with UEV, you're really just setting the uh, settings of the OS that you want to, um, you know, take away from the profile. And also, so it could work. Is, uh, personally, I always look at mandatory profiles as how we, we used to work when we wanted to rule everything and just keep everything uh, the way we wanted to. But the idea is to, you know, give users a little bit of empowerment to go and... Uh, <laughs> well, they're not messing up anything. If... if if they screw up an, an app that's unusable to them, you could just uh, reset the, just restore a, a default state. So back to mandatory, whatever, <laughs> what you like. Yeah, sorry, yeah, you want to see something? Okay, data, UV settings. I, yeah. Only for Office, yeah, for that use. Yeah, you're just changing the. Well, it's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the agent is looking at that, that package. And if that package is not there, the agent's just going to pull the default that's in the template. And you've got a lot of admins. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Well, it, it depends on what settings is in that location when the app closes. Yeah. So if, if, if they're changing it before the app uh, opens again, uh, the agent's going to pull whatever settings in this package and apply it and overwrite the admin. Exactly. So...
So you really need a method to stop yourselves to uh, uh, muck it up a bit. You could, but it's not gonna. It's not gonna make much sense. So that's that's pretty much what it is. But. As you can see, it's only 2 KB, so it's real, uh, real uh, small. Uh, when you look at the template that you've created. Um, not that I'm aware of. Okay, I just want to go back to the presentation. Yeah, it's just XML files. Let me have a look. Looking at the requirements from Windows 7 to uh, Server 2012, uh, doesn't matter whether it's 32-bit, 64-bit, the, the agent is available in both 32 and 64. .NET frameworks required, Windows 7, 3.5, and for Windows 8 and Server 2012, well, you got 4.0 or 3.5, doesn't matter for the agent. For the generator, you definitely need to install uh, 3.5. And as you can see, offline files on Windows 7 enable by default uh, installation on Server 2008 R2. Uh, those are the defaults. So the agent senses a bit what's happening on the uh, OS, or what kind of OS you have. So pretty much the implementation of UEV, you'd need to configure a setting storage location. We had a look at the uh, file share with all the user folders created where the setting packages gets created. So you'd have a setting storage location. You use group policy. I mean, we, we're all using group policy. Uh, in Citrix, I know you're using uh, group policy as well. Uh, you select to create these templates. By default, there's only a few uh, minimal uh, windows for the OS and also Office 2007, Office 2010, and a couple of others. Uh, Link uh, 2010, uh, calculator word, that sort of thing and you can deploy and manage your settings location templates. Deploying the agent, once again, you're using group policy or whatever system that you have in place in your organization, whether you're running uh, MDT or some other uh, deployment mechanism, uh, system center. Uh, I, I use system center a lot uh, to deploy Windows 7, Windows 8, uh, Server 2012, uh, everything. And you can use uh, scripted installation. We look at the different uh, agent deployments, uh, running the EXE, some of the switches, uh, silent install, uh, enable um, sync per user. Uh, you have during VDI where you don't want to have the agent to use offline files, you'll specify sync method uh, none because uh, you're always persistently connected to the servers anyway when you're logging on. And specifying the settings location during setup. So setting storage path, server, share, username. Yeah, yeah they're free to download. At the second last slide, I have the locations of the Atomex templates and everything and I'm sure that the slide deck and the video is available as well. Uh, log on on the web. Management of the agent, uh, group policy, if you're using System Center. Uh, a lot of my clients already have uh, System Center implementation. Normally, uh, something that I've uh, implemented. There's uh, a nice DCM pack desired configuration management that monitors the state of the agent and if for some reason that it's not um, 
according to the baseline that's been set, it will just go and make sure that the agent has all the correct settings. And uh, for the script guys out there, uh, I know Jeff Rodis gave a great uh, PowerShell session and uh, Tim and, uh, as well during the conference, uh, you could use PowerShell. Um, pretty much the entire future is PowerShell. I, uh, I'm not much of a PowerShell guy. I use it a lot, but I'm, I just use my scripts that I have available to me. And then we'll have a look at the different PowerShell uh, scripts that's available with uh, UEV. <coughs> and the default to the home folder, or you could set a specific path. These are the different, uh, some of the different PowerShell uh, commands available. So if you're used to using PowerShell, to import the UEV module, uh, quite easy, uh, input module. I pretty much use uh, the get command module a lot for just about every uh, PowerShell module that I need. So that pretty much shows me which commands I need to use. But for some of the, the default stuff, to just to check the configuration, get UV configuration will then go and show you what the uh, UV configuration is like. You could export that to a, to a file, UEV file, and uh, view it to view uh, the templates that are enabled because you could have templates that are not enabled. You can either enable or disable if you... Uh, want to disable the use of a specific application or, or um, some reason and to have a look at them. To quickly look at the UEV management of that. Um, let me just uh, quickly have a look. I've got my PowerShell. Uh, let me grab my cheat sheet to make sure that I get the spelling correct. So that's pretty much how my agent is configured. If you have a look, uh, you'll see that the um, setting storage path location is set. Also a template catalog path. And your catalog is really where you'll be putting all your XML uh, uh, files for the different applications that you want all your users to be able to uh, use and because this is my uh, RDS server offline files don't need to be enabled so uh, sync method set to none and sync enabled is set to true that just means that uh, UEV is active so I could set it off and nothing would happen for my users you might want to do that to your administrators so they could just do what they want anyway And um, get command those are all the different PowerShell uh, commandlets available to you. So if you're comfortable and you prefer using PowerShell, uh, what, what was that? Well, it, 
really just uh, exports uh, the package uh, that you specify to something. Uh, or you could uh, export the configuration or uh, you could view, uh, like we could, we could view all the packages or the templates that's enabled on this uh, computer. Let's see, uh, get templates. Uh, oh. I normally just uh, got uh, Jeff Voters on speed dial when I have a PowerShell question. Template ID, everything that's enabled, and just auto size this table for me. So if we look at all the templates that I have activated, that's that's all the the active template that I've have enabled. And what we can do is look at the registry. And this is pretty much the information that the PowerShell is pulling up. So that's the location for the computer settings and current user Microsoft UV agent configuration I just said and this is exactly what I have in Google policy Any questions? Yeah. And that's the next step. So we're going to look at how we go about creating those templates if we don't have the template provided by Microsoft, because uh, there's just a few. Those are the actual settings that you're writing, that you're changing from the application. In XML format, there's a certain amount of templates provided for you by Microsoft, but like AppV, we have to sequence your applications yourself. You have a custom application you can use the UV generator to go and create those templates for your application. So you could customize it in your environment on all the applications that you want to apply these, this concept on. There's also a community uh, base, a bunch of guys that create these templates and they post it on the web on the Microsoft site. The second last slide has the link to that. I have downloaded some of them as well. And uh, some of these guys, they have for Adobe, uh, Outlook 2013, and a bunch of other uh, custom templates on that site. Sharing is caring. So if you have created one for a general application, maybe Adobe Photoshop Elements or something, then uh, you could post it on the site as well for people to use. Sharing is caring. So we, we put these templates in the catalog. So it's just a way of centrally storing the, those uh, XML files, or you could uh, put it locally on the client, because that's where uh, the default location is. Templates are pulled from the catalog with the scheduled task, uh, apply settings template catalog.exe. It's set to run, uh, 
at a certain time. Um, you could look on the uh, schedule tasks at these uh, settings. And then you could make your custom templates or uh, the default. And that's pretty much how the UEV generator works. And let's go have a look at the demo. So this is just a normal uh, Windows 7 computer. Uh, I to, yeah, I want to log into the domain. So Microsoft provides the UV generator. And you install it. And when you open it up, when it opens up, You could either go and create a template. You could go and edit, have a look at the template, see what, what it's actually uh, looking at, which registry, which uh, folders on the client that the application requires. Or you could go um, and edit these uh, XML files, because they're really just XML files. You could edit them. But uh, Microsoft provided a way to validate the format of the XML files. Kind of help you in a way if you made a mistake. So you could go and check that file if you manually edited it to see if, the, if it's uh, formatically correct. It's, it doesn't check on the data, it just checks on the format. So you could make changes to the XML file and then just uh, by using validate, we'll have a look at that as well. Now the way it works is you have to have had the, your application installed on the same machine. So we want to create a settings location. You go and look at the file, the exe of the application. So it doesn't matter where I had, uh, I used 7-zip, could be your own application. So I go to the exe file, I open it. I could specify specific command line arguments. Maybe you pointing to a specific database. So you could create it per uh, wh whatever environment that the application needs to run. Working folder, you could set that. I'll just set it as the same folder. I click Next. And the generator will go and start up that application for me. So now... This could be your own custom application. I'll go and make the changes. Remember, this really just saves the settings. So whatever settings I allow or want the user to change, I could either select all the settings, but the idea is to keep it to a minimum. Um, let's just say uh, I'm going to unselect these that I don't want to associate with my application. Um, I want to deselect these. I could specify a specific folder. Uh, let's use system temp, leave it at that. Editor, settings, uh, let's have a look. Just the menu. Take away my grid lines. That's what I have on the right. Language. Uh, I could change my language. I'll just set it to Dutch quickly. So these are the kind of session settings that the user would go and change. I 
close my application. The generator goes and looks at all the locations on the computer where that application writes to. So whether it's the registry, whether it's the, the, the folder of the application where it's installed in, it's done. I click on Next. And then it gives me the options to look at uh, all the different uh, options. So these are all the standard uh, locations. Yeah. Uh, the writing, reading and writing. Well, you, wherever you're making the changes, it's writing to those locations. So it's either it's either setting it to. Yeah. Well, then then it won't uh, really find anything. Then it it, it will just. Uh, yeah. Well, it will read as well and write. So wh wh whatever the application does, whether it's. Uh, Well, it's, it's, You could you could add a few uh, specific things as well, like if you know that whatever you didn't do, uh, you could uh, manipulate it. Maybe delete something, uh, set it. Yeah. It looks at what you changed and captures that. It's pretty much like uh, uh, sequencing in a bit. And then when I click on create, I just specify a name, a location to save it in, and it saved that XML file. Now if we have a look at that XML file, uh, where did I save it to? Was it program files? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just based it somewhere else. It's really just a XML file. Same format. Um, you could go and edit this manually. You see, the agent really just looks at what's in this file, the locations, and that's uh, what it does. So on open, it will go and check, has anything changed or not? Apply the settings. Yeah. Yeah. So I just m manually edited this uh, file. I'm going to save it. Uh, quickly. So let's say I've made some change, new version or something. You could also use the edit button to go and edit that file, which is the advised method. Or if you manually edit it, you can go and validate that specific file. So i am made a change and I open Okay, that's the wrong one. Uh, edit. Where did I save it to? 
Okay, I saved it on the network. So I want to validate. I want to browse. I'm going to go to my network location. There's my file. Validate the file. There's a problem. So that really just validates the format that the XML is written in. It doesn't check on the data. So if you change the version number or a data part of the application that's incorrect, it's not going to know that. So just be careful when creating these things. And if I go back and edit that file, Because you could have multiple, you could have an app v app, you could have a natively installed app. It will check. It will check for that version. No, it's sp it's specific. You create the file for each version. <laughs> Java. Yeah. So if I go and uh, validate it now, my template is valid because I adjusted it back. Okay. Yeah. You wanted to look at the. Let me just uh, run the run the slide because we've got like five minutes uh, left. Um, I'm on my last slide anyway. So troubleshooting, you're pretty much going to look at your group policies, how you implemented your, uh, your agent, and also how you're managing the agent to give you uh, more or less uh, what you'll be looking at. The default uh, group policies, ADMX uh, templates have been provided for you. And these are the locations where you can uh, find the community templates and also the DCM pack if you're using System Center Configuration Manager. The admin guide is a good place to start, uh, the Microsoft way of implementing the product and configuring the agent. And uh, on the web, to uh, UEV deployment, uh, all the downloads. These are available for you when you log in on the site. Um, should be in the video. And uh, Jackie, will they be able to download the presentation as well?